Hi guys, it's time for another video and another week has passed and uh, that means today is another weekly review. Uh, but first off, uh, I have to show you a title I forgot to take with uh, to show you in my last week weekly review and that was Battlestar Galactica Season 1. Yes, I finally started uh, watching this show now. Uh, and uh, from all the great things I've heard about Battlestar Galactica, I was having some pretty high expectations on this. And sort of delivered. I mean, I had a, a bit of a time getting into this season. It really started to pick up in the last sort of three three or four episodes of this season and it's really picked up now and when I'm watching season two but good show uh, not really what I what I expected in the beginning uh, but it's picking up a good face and it's starting to get really interesting. So, uh, Battlestar Galactica Season 1. Good uh, good show. I give this season a 3 out of 5. Now we start with the uh, with the movies I've seen over the past week. And first off, we have uh, a movie that I was sort of inspired to watch again uh, after last week's last week when I saw the earthquake. Uh, and uh, that is The Towering Inferno, starring Steve McQueen, Paul Newman, William Holden, Faye Dunaway, Fred Astaire, and just a bunch of other great actors. Uh, this is the disaster movie of the 1970s. This is just great. Uh, Steve McQueen plays uh, for the, the fire chief that comes to this really, really tall uh, skyscraper in Los Angeles that has been caught on fire. Uh, there's a bunch of people being trapped inside and so on. And just try to rescue them. And uh, Paul Newman plays the, the architect uh, who's has designed the building and yeah it's uh, this is a, re a really good film it is really suspenseful it's 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 got a lot of things working for it so uh, uh, I would say if you haven't seen this one I would highly recommend you seeing this I give it a four out of five a strong four out, four out of five for the Towering Inferno. And now for something completely different. Uh, we jump from uh, seven, 1970s disaster movies to the late 1930s and the Western. And the movie I saw was Jesse James, starring Tyrone Powers, Henry Fonda. Nancy Kelly and Randolph Scott, directed by Henry King and released in 1939. This is a movie about the outlaw Jesse James and his, his brother Frank. And uh, yeah, it's sort of the story of how Jesse James became uh, the, this notorious, notorious outlaw. Uh, and uh, yeah, this one is. I have seen. Uh, uh, let's see now. The, the the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford, uh, which was a was a great film. And compared to that one, this one is takes some r really big liberties with. Uh, with historical accuracy, uh, and uh, 
it sort of, I think, sort of hurts the movie quite a bit. Uh, Tyrone Powers is good in uh, in the role of Jesse James. I would, it's not, it's not his best role of what I have seen. Uh, Henry Fonda does a decent job. It's great to see him in. in uh, uh, this sort of an uh, early ro role in his career. Uh, but I would say the, the one that really made an impact with me was uh, Randolph Scott, uh, who is <laughs> sort of Mr. Western in, uh, in the, the classic, classic Hollywood era. He's made a ton of uh, Western movies. Uh, and, and he does a, a really good job in this one as uh, the, the town marshal. Uh, and yeah, it's, I would say Jesse James, I would say, if you like classic Western movies, I would say definitely uh, take a look at this one. Otherwise, I would, yeah, you can sort of skip this one. It's not one of the best uh, uh, classic Hollywood Western films. So uh, I would give this a 3 out of 5. Next one uh, we have here is a horror film. The Woman in Black. Starring Daniel Radcliffe and uh, directed by James Watkins. Watkins. Uh, this is sort of a, ha a haunted house uh, movie. Uh, Daniel Radcliffe plays, uh, I think he plays a lawyer that uh, uh, goes up from, uh, from London to... Uh, a small uh, village uh, somewhere in in England, England, uh, to look over through uh, some paperwork uh, for a big for a big estate where the owner has recently passed away, and there uh, in this village there is some rather spooky things happening and it's sort of all uh, centered around this uh, large estate uh, and I like this movie I, I, I thought it was really suspenseful there is a lot of dark atmospheres especially in uh, this uh, big uh, house so, so uh, and also it's it's quite scary at uh, at uh, times. So I enjoyed this. Uh, uh, I, I give it a a, str a strong uh, three out of four. I also uh, rented a movie this week, and the movie I watched was uh, the company you keep. Uh, directed by Robert Redford and also starring Robert Redford and uh, together with a bunch of uh, really, really great actors. I mean, we have Julie Christie, we have Chris Cooper, we have Shia LaBeouf, uh, and just the list goes on and on. And this was really a great movie. I hadn't heard a thing about it. I uh, So I was really unsure what to expect, but this was a really well-played drama uh, uh, where uh, uh, Robert Redford plays a uh, sort of a small town lawyer who uh, after a, a woman has been uh, arrested by the FBI as a, uh, a uh, 
she was, uh, I, would, I guess, would say a, a a protester of uh, sort of a radical protester of uh, the Vietnam War. She was part of, of a group uh, of ra uh, radical protesters of the of the Vietnam War, who was sort of taking it more. Uh, the protest of the war more violently. They end up, uh, this group end up uh, uh, robbing a bank where uh, they actually kill a guard uh, in the process. And uh, yeah, she's been in hiding for some 20 odd years and now she's finally decided to uh, turn herself in and this is all over the news uh, Robert Redford's character gets uh, asked to uh, take take your case but he's uh, no 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 he doesn't doesn't really want it is not interesting and there is uh, Sheila Booth plays uh, a young uh, local newspaper reporter who gets sort of interested in the story and is sort of wondering of why uh, Robert Redford's character is sort of doesn't doesn't want this big uh, big case uh, and he sort of uh, starts digging in the, in the story and, it, and he finds uh, some uh, uh, some uh, interesting uh, things in Robert in, in Robert Redford's background and uh, it sort of develops from there and uh, yeah, I think I really enjoyed this movie. It was really great, well played, beautifully shot, and I would I give this a a, a four a four out of five. I, I thought it was great. Uh, next up, I saw three movies at the cinema this week, this past week. Yes, and first off, we we have uh, Wong Kar Wai's uh, The Grandmaster, uh, which uh, stars uh, uh, Tong Leung Shu Wai and Zhang Xiu, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm sorry for <laughs> the pronunciation of the names. I'm. It's a bit of a hard one there to uh, to pronounce uh, Chinese names, but anyway, uh, this one is yet an, another uh, another movie of uh, about uh, the martial artist arts master Ip Man, who, uh, as you know, was the teacher of uh, Bruce Lee. And uh, I have seen, you know, the Donnie Yen uh, films, uh, which I really enjoyed. And Wong Kar Wai is, I mean, I really enjoy him as, as a director. He has a, a very visual style uh, of, of directing. And uh, I was interesting to see him how he would uh, approach uh, Ip Man and if it was would be any good. Uh, sadly, it didn't come meet up to my expectations of the movie. Uh, it's beautifully shot and it's got a great soundtrack. Uh, Tong Leung is does a good job as uh, as Ip Man. However, this movie is really splintered. I mean, it's supposed to be a movie about Ip Man, but there there is at least 
two two other two three other side stories that the movie sort of goes away on for quite a long time in, within a movie where we don't see Ip Man, we, we don't follow Ip Man, we follow another character in the movie and I I didn't enjoy that. I mean I I was in interested to see the story of Ip Man, not this other sort of side stories which I didn't feel helped the movie. Uh, so uh, the Grand Master uh, not really that good. I mean it's beautifully shot as I said and it's got a great soundtrack and so uh, the martial arts uh, sequences are uh, great uh, great choreography there. I mean uh, it is choreographed by uh, Yuan Wu, Wu Ping who has done uh, I mean Fist of Legends uh, the Matrix geology fight scenes and such so I mean he is one of the best in the business in terms of choreographing uh, martial arts uh, sequences uh, but other than that it, this one has not that much going for it so I would say a week Three out of five for the Grandmaster. Next one I saw was uh, uh, the Promised Land, uh, uh, directed by Gus Van Sant uh, and starring Matt Damon and Francis Francis Fra Francis McDormand. And this was a. Uh, Pretty good drama. Uh, Matt Damon and Francis McDormand plays, uh, you know, uh, representatives of uh, of a gas company who wants to. Uh, uh, their their job is to go to this uh, small uh, farming town and uh, sort of get get. The the farmers to sign over uh, their land to the company for them to uh, go in and start uh, getting up uh, gas from the land. They sort of uh, uh, in a process they, uh, known as uh, fracking. Um, if you have seen. Uh, the documentary Gasland, you perhaps a bit aware of uh, of fracking and uh, the the sort of controversial controversy about uh, of this process of getting natural gas. So uh, the movie is about that, and and uh, there problems of. Getting the town to sign over the land. So that's it. What the movie is about, and I thought it was very good. Good movie. I, I Matt Damon is great. It does a really good job. Frances McDormand is also great. I mean, she's always. Uh, good in her movies. I don't think I have actually seen a a movie with her where she does a, a bad job. Uh, so, Promised Land, good film. Really recommend you to uh, uh, go and see this if you uh, are in the mood for a, a well played drama. So, Promised Land. A free out of five. And the, the last movie I saw last week was Elysium. Uh, this yet again starring uh, starring Matt Damon and uh, directed by Neil Blomkamp who uh, 
as you perhaps know, uh, uh, Directive District 9. Uh, this is a uh, uh, science fiction action film. Uh, the, it takes place in the year 2159, where you, so humanity is sort of divided up into two groups. I mean, the, the majority of uh, humanity is living on, on Earth, uh, which is sort of all destroyed to the uh, pretty much destroyed by pollution uh, natural catastrophes and really messed up uh, and the the rich uh, people uh, live on this space station called Elysium where, I mean, they live in luxury, everything is great, there is no, no crime, no sickness. Uh, simply, it, it is quite literally the utopia. Uh, while life on Earth is basically shit. So, Matt Damon plays... Uh, and he's an ex-con who uh, now so, uh, tries to live a, a, a law-abiding, decent life, uh, has a job at, an, in a factory. Uh, however, he has a, an accident at work. Uh, he ends... Uh, end up being exposed to radiation, a lethal dose of radiation is actually dying for most part of the movie. However, he is convinced that if he can get up to Elysium, they have a, this, this sort of um, med beds uh, that can uh, make you uh, uh, make you well. So uh, he is convinced. Can if he can get up to Elysium, he can save his life. Uh, so he tries to uh, find a way to get up there, and that was is what this movie is about. Uh, Jodie Foster here plays the sort of I would say the main main villain in this. She is the sort of defense ministry minister for Elysium and sort of really hard line. She base, basically she she plots a a coup to uh, basically put herself self in 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 power on Elysium and uh, sort of really take a, a hard line against uh, the people of on who uh, lives on earth who uh, tries to get on to Elysium so that is a bit of what what the movie is about uh, and I had some high, uh, hopes on this one. I, uh, from the trailers I thought this actually looks really good. However, uh, it's not that good when I see it. I, when I had finished seeing it, uh, I was thinking, what? What was this it? Uh, I mean, this one, this movie actually, essentially has the same problem I, I, I mentioned. The uh, the purge had. I mean, it's it has uh, script problems, uh, both with the both with the story and with the characters. Uh, 
the first sort of 20, 20, 20, 30 minutes of the movie is, is great. This is really what the movie should, should have been all the way through. You know, the, uh, we see the life, life on, on Earth and uh, Matt, Matt Damon trying to get by and uh, then just about uh, after the, uh, the 30 minute mark uh, he has his, his accident and then from there it sort of goes downhill like right, in my opinion uh, Jodie Foster is really the more, the more she has the most, in, in my opinion, the most interesting character. And she is, is the main villain here. However, it, she ends up, big spoiler here now, she ends up being killed uh, shortly before the finale of the, of, the, of the movie. And she ends up being killed and by the least interesting character in the movie. She, uh, who is sort of the henchman uh, here. And his character, I mean, he, it really does, he really does not work, especially not as the main villain, as he's um uh, ends ends up here in the last uh, last period of the of the movie he really does not work as movie he's not he's not he's not believable he just does, doesn't have any any real motivation for his actions i mean it's really just a, a messed up one dimensional boring character Matt Damon's character it, it's good but it could have been could have been better so okay now now I've been ranting en enough about the the problems of Elysium so I'm not gonna continue on much longer now so I will say Elysium not what I had expected. It's going to have to be a, a, a week, three out of five for Elysium. So there you have all the movies I've seen over the past week. And I've seen some, some good titles, uh, a few good titles and a few not so good titles. So there you have it. And uh, thank you for this, and uh, I see you in my next video. Bye bye.